my attorney, Mr. Richard uh, 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 Kibbins, Kibbe. Kibbe, yeah, Mr. Richard Kibbe and his daughter, Barbara Kibbe. Uh, they were very helpful and instrumental in bringing this case to this successful and, and joyous conclusion. Uh, and I'd like for my co-counsel, Ms. Pamela Price, to uh, share some comments. Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming and for waiting for us. My name is Pamela Price. I'm a civil rights attorney from Oakland, California. I came to Stewart, Florida to rescue this young woman. I want to first thank again the people of Stewart, Florida for the hospitality that we've enjoyed here. I want to thank the citizens of the San Francisco Bay Area who have shown a tremendous outpouring of concern uh, for this young woman's safety and support for our efforts to bring her back to the Bay Area so that we can hold our police officials accountable. This young woman was involved with seven different police jurisdictions, law enforcement agencies. We believe that public safety requires public trust and that the citizens of Bay Area, of the Bay Area, as well as the citizens of Stewart, Florida, as well as the citizens of this country have a right to know when public officials, particularly law enforcement, are engaged in particularly heinous crimes such as child sex exploitation. That is not acceptable for any member of our society either to engage in it or to be subjected to it. And I can tell you as I stand here today as a representative as well of the Coalition to Restore Public Trust, we are mothers, we are sisters, we are fathers, we are daughters. And we cannot stand by idly. We could not stand by idly when we learned of this young woman's story and indeed when we became very clear that she was not the only one. And that if we allowed her to be victimized by law enforcement or to be used or abused or tricked by anyone and left here in Stewart, Florida under false pretenses to face these charges alone, then every child on the street that is facing the same kind of life, that is trapped in a, in a web of sexual assault and sexual abuse, would know that you cannot come forward. We want our children to come forward. We want them to come off the streets. We want our law enforcement to be held accountable, to protect and serve in the way that we expect them to. We have a right to expect our law enforcement to do that. And I can tell you, as we return to the Bay Area, we intend to hold everyone accountable. I am pleased that Attorney Charles Bonner has agreed to serve as lead counsel on this case. He has written the bracelet novel. He has done work representing victims of sex trafficking. And we intend to address this issue in the Bay Area. And I urge citizens here in Florida, from here, from Florida to California, take a look around. You don't know who's being sex trafficked. You don't know who is a victim of human trafficking. Human trafficking is a billion dollar industry in this country and around the world. And most of the victims are women and children. And it only survives because we tolerate it. And it, we cannot tolerate law enforcement of the magnitude that we have observed in the Bay Area to, to do this to our children. So I urge everyone, we appreciate so much the support that we have. As you know, we have to now provide for her security because her life is under threat. That is not acceptable in America. It's not acceptable anywhere, but it's certainly not acceptable in the San Francisco Bay Area. And we're not going to have it. We're going to protect this young woman. We're going to make sure that she gets the help she needs. She's going to help us help other victims who are being sex trafficked on the streets of Oakland, Richmond, San Francisco, even as I speak. We're going to address this issue with full force. Thank you very much for coming. It is our understanding that the Richmond Police Department, and in particular the leadership of that department, engaged in communication with a local uh, agency here and brought her here under false pretenses. And we will be addressing that when we return home. No, she should not be. We have many lovely facilities in the Bay Area, throughout California, and the kind of treatment that this young woman needs is not a drug rehab program. She is a victim of child sex trafficking. She is traumatized. She needs that kind of help. And with all due respect to the facility where she was sent, they don't have that kind of a program for her. And Ms. Price, for those of us not fully aware of her background, how long has this been going on in her life? 
since she was 12 years old. Can we, can we talk yes. to her? Can, can you speak with her? No, not at this time. Thank you. How does she pronounce Jasmine. A bustling. Yes. Yes. Celeste Guap is dead. <laughs> we are happy to say that Celeste Guap is dead. I agree with the Alameda County prosecutor who said that uh, she thought the Richmond Police Department arranged for her to come here uh, as a means of inhibiting the prosecution. I would. I don't know what their motive is. I will tell you as a lawyer, I don't tamper with witnesses. And anything that looks like witness tampering, I'm told in Florida, you all have a very strong law and basic practice that you cannot tamper with a witness. We have that same understanding in California. She is a witness to criminal activity, a criminal conspiracy in the Bay Area. There is no reason or rhyme at all for why she is here in Stewart, Florida. And the fact that she, within a matter of days, was arrested, charged, and jailed for 17 days on a felony charge is just mind boggling. I can tell you that people in the Bay Area, the citizens of the Bay Area are outraged that this has occurred. Was she sent here for drug treatment? Is that why, why she'd be sent here? Allegedly, yes. What drug, what drug specifically? She has no drug, uh, she is not a drug addict. She is a child victim of sexual trauma and child sex trafficking. She was sent here, your argument is she was sent here to get her out of the way so she wouldn't be there to testify against the officers who had sex with her, is that it? I hope I get to make that in closing argument before the jury, yes sir. You, <laughs> okay. We go home. We love Florida, it's been nice, but we're going home. We're going home as soon as we can, yes so ma'am. She was not a drug addict. No, no sir, she that. is not a drug addict. No. Why, why did she have sex with as many as 30 officers? Because was she, paid for this? Was she forced to do it by, by threat? What happened there? Children who are abused, who are recruited and targeted by sex traffickers, all of our children are targets potentially. You would be amazed if you go to any elementary school in this city and in this state, there are men who are looking to target young girls who seduce them who abuse the fact that they are children, that they are easily manipulated, tricked. And once a child is recruited into that life, there's a trap. And it is very, very, very difficult for children to understand that the type of trickery that a, an adult woman might be able to quickly catch on to, she can't understand that. And so it happens every day around the world. But again, why did, they, why did she have sex with the police officers were engaged in a conspiracy to sexually traffic children. Not she is not the only one. This, unfortunately, as our DA has recognized, there were more officers that uh, who engaged in inappropriate sexual conduct than the ones even whom she has agreed to charge. And this is a network of police officers that we found. You may not be familiar with the Bay Area. We are about nine million people. It's nine Bay Area counties, and we have at least five Bay Area counties that have been implicated in this scandal. So why did they choose her? I wasn't there the day that they decided to prey upon her. I'm not there now. I don't know why they pick on children. Who understands the mind of a pedophile? I don't know. There are people who are better uh, at that and have spent a lot more time than I have. I'm a civil rights lawyer. I know you don't get to abuse children and there are legal remedies for that. Did it happen while the police officers were on duty at the police station in a squad car? Where did this take place? It's happening every day. With her, where did it happen? It happened in a lot of different places under a lot of different circumstances. It is a lifestyle that she, that Celeste Guap was trapped in. And that is, that lifestyle we are about, that lifestyle is now going to be gone. Did they pay her for sex? It was a lifestyle, sir. You, if you have any idea about child sex trafficking, you would understand that payment can be money, it can be intimidation, it can be, I will let you live today. I will not kill you in this room. And I will represent to you that this child has been kidnapped, she has been placed in fear of her life. She has been held against her will in multiple locations in the Bay Area. So whether or not somebody gave her a dollar or a dime is irrelevant. The fact that she is alive today is a miracle.
It may be that we have to have federal intervention. We certainly have called upon uh, California Attorney General Kamala Harris to take jurisdiction over the investigation of all of these incidents because there are seven different law enforcement agencies. The Bay Area is a large place. It's a beautiful place. But every town in America has this problem. Every city in the world has this problem. And it only begins to, we can only begin to stop it if citizens step up and start paying attention and are willing to take action. When somebody needs help, you have to be willing to help them. She's willing to testify against seven different officers saying I had sex with each of these men. It's seven different jurisdictions, sir. We don't know how many officers will be uh, ultimately charged or how many will be named as defendants in the lawsuit. But it's not just seven different officers. Seven uh, police agencies. Officers from seven different police agencies is what has been identified. How old was she when that occurred? She has been engaged in this lifestyle since she was 12. But when she was having sex with officers from seven different places, how old was she then? Sir, um, she has been engaged in this lifestyle since she was 12. I'm not going to give you a chronology of every time she had sex with a police officer. Oh, clearly, that is certainly, that is what we believe the evidence clearly shows. You could not have this many officers engaged in this conduct across jurisdictional lines without um, an internal network and communication amongst all of them. If you want to see these men go to prison for what happened, what, is, what do you think is justice here? What are you seeking? I don't, we're seeking justice. Justice for her will be, number one, a res restoration of her privacy and her private identity would be number one. She is entitled certainly to compensation from each one of the jurisdictions where officers have violated the law and violated her civil rights. Uh, ultimately, I think as a citizen of the Bay Area and as a representative of the coalition to restore public trust, we want to see our public officials step up, engage, provide transparent leadership Stop trying to hide and cover up the truth. The level of cover up that we now know existed with respect to not only her case, but it's continuing as to the involvement of other children. It is simply unacceptable for law enforcement or public officials to engage in that kind of complicity. Is there any significance to the tattoo on Jasmine's chest? Oh, I have no idea. She's a child. <laughs> She's not able to answer. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You're looking for criminal Would her mother be involved in the investigation at all? I'm sure that her mother is and has been involved in the investigation, yes. You're hoping for criminal charges against each officer who had sex with her, and then you're going to file a civil suit against these police agencies as well for monetary damage? I'm hoping for criminal charges against any officer who violated the law by engaging in child sex trafficking in the San Francisco Bay Area. And now that we know that seven different law enforcement are, are involved, I'm hoping that each agency, led by strong, honest, committed leadership will take steps to root out the problem within their jurisdiction and that they will lead by example, that they will compel the public officials to do what is necessary to ensure that this never happens again. Are you filing civil lawsuits as well to seek monetary damage? Yes, we will be doing that. Yes. How does she feel today about question? getting this case resolved in Florida? Uh, Jasmine is glad to be free and wants to go home. And we're going home. Are there any other questions? What is the difference in all these different kinds of names being asked for and other identities being used? Who are these people? The person who was being sex trafficked that has been blasted all over the news with Kardashian like celebrity status was a victim of child sex trafficking. Jasmine is a young woman who is going to find herself, who wants to become a veterinarian. She's going to go back to school. She's going to create a life that every young woman should have. Jasmine is going to get a second chance at a second class life. In your eyes, who's author of that? Who's the a lot of men. Home is Oakland? Home is the San Francisco Bay, Bay Area. Area. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you all for coming. Yes, I do.